in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Jesus adumbrated it in the story of the rich fool. It was not money that made him a fool. It was his mindset that he did not have eternity in view. He gathered all he had and found security in it and said, my soul, ah, not my body. Prosperity does not touch the soul. He said, my soul, let this money secure you. And he said, you are a fool. I will prove to you that money is only relevant in this realm. Tonight, your soul will be demanded. There are many people who have sat down concentrating on money, on church growth, and different aspects of the faith. And they just died unprepared. And many of them today are in hellfire. Are you hearing me now? Nobody can plead. There are judges in hell. So who will plead for you? If you die without the lord jesus christ nobody will advocate for you you are going to hell take this seriously can i tell you something some of the people who are in hell had this kind of messages they didn't know it was going to be a serious issue they didn't know they were going to die very soon while it is true that we advocate for longevity not so that we will just sit down wasting our life on the lust of this life but we have a lot of things to do for the kingdom he said i shall not die but not live to raise money live to declare that means if you are not declaring you are not permitted to live are you getting me please koinonia take serious what i'm saying because there are people in hell today as i speak to you from hell they are hearing this message and wondering look at the rich man jesus has given us a window look at the rich man while he was in the, in hell he saw his brothers still behaving foolish like him and he begged abraham he said abraham please i love my family so much can you please send lazarus to come from the dead and maybe when they see him from the dead they will believe him and Jesus made a statement that is still relevant today. He said, whether he comes from the dead, let me tell you, they won't believe him. Because there is something called the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of this life. I see the way many people sit down. Somebody can even look at you and say, I will eliminate you. Look at a foolish person. You were born by a woman. A seed fertilized your mother to give birth to you. Now you have such an audacity to believe the life of another man is in your hands. Because of political power, because of whatever. Can I tell you something? Every soul in this earth is subject to the voice of God. And when he makes demand of you, he will not give you room to package everything. You will live at once. Are you listening to me? This is a very, very important message tonight. There is an event called the rapture. A day will come. I don't know if I will see you. But I guarantee you if you make it, you will see me. Because I'm taking my life seriously. The Bible says, Paul speaking, said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself, all this apostle thing you do, only ends in this realm. Oh. No demon has called one person apostle. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will not carry your parish to hell or to heaven. You will not carry your money, whatever you have. You 
you won't carry your certificate there's no need never allow westernization and education and social orientation to preach you out of this truth our fathers died the missionaries that came to this country died with this one single message they did not tap into the area of divine health and malaria killed them but at least they died in christ they are resting at the bosom of god today but there are many erroneous teachings many ministers camping around some devilish teachings teaching people that this life they will remain forever here at this state and that there is no rapture oh there is my bible tells me there is i just read it for you jesus is returning are you listening to me his feet will not touch the earth those who have been dead in christ they will arise and we who are alive we will meet with them listen please when we meet with them what will happen we will be caught up in the air and we will return watch this the moment that happens then there will now be an unleashing of the man of sin the one who we now call the antichrist hello planet earth there is the antichrist he's not just a system he's also an entity are you getting what i'm saying do you know why the antichrist ministry will be celebrated because the chaos that will happen to the earth after the rapture it will confuse journalists it will confuse everyone and then he will come in and attempt to stabilize the world right now there is a move the whole move of the world is to bring the entire earth right now into a one world system and this is the rebuilding of the tower of babel these are already the structures of the antichrist look at facebook something if i slap jakes right now in 10 minutes all over the world the information can go viral welcome these are the machineries that the antichrist will make use of they are not demonic machineries we will use them for the kingdom and check out and leave it for whoever cares about them i don't know what we will do with the oil of nigeria that we are fighting on when we all depart i don't know if you will sit down inside the oil mine and drink the oil by yourself There are some of you is 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 your your quest for marriage that will take you to hell you don't want to hear anything about god if the teaching is not on how to force your husband to come into your life you are not ready i cannot wait here is my life here is my life I want to give, I want to give in serving my fellow man, doing the will of God. Here is my life, here is my life, here is my life. I rather you call me a failure from Earth's perspective, I rather have a ministry where these are all my members and i'm sure every one of them is going to heaven than to have a crowd of people there are many congregations in nigeria that are on the highway to hell altar call there are churches that the last time an altar call was made was more than one year if they make altar call is for sowing many people receive miracles they come and testify i was healed but they are going to hell i was blessed but i was going to hell they prophesied to me and i got the miracle job the miracle baby came you and the baby well babies are not in hell i'll talk about that there are no babies in hell there are small children but no babies in hell i will tell you that when we talk about the assurance of salvation I want to ask you a question right now is your name in the book of life 
please look up i'm asking you a very serious question i'm not asking your neighbor is your name in the book of life i've had another teaching there's no book of life what is all this this bible is clear god gave people wisdom to interpret it in english to help us what is it about the book of life that you don't understand the bible says books were open i read it last week it said and then another book was open and it was called the book of life he said whoever's name whether you are a preacher with rema if your name is not found in the book of life the bible says you will be cast into the lake of fire please take it seriously that you bear the title apostle and prophet does not take your name to the book of life are you hearing what i'm saying that you can quote genesis to revelation does not put your name in the book of life please take what i'm saying seriously the rapture will happen it will happen even evangelists now hear the nonsense they teach on crusade grounds they gather people and instead of lashing this thing and hammering it to enter very well so that those i don't mean condemnation i mean conviction in the days of dl moody let me tell you something when they preached the power of conviction that left people were caught up and they saw visions of hell at once and they returned they held their seats and they were shivering waiting for the time of altar call but right now when we make altar calls the people are even angry the pastor keeps begging because he's embarrassed he's just saying somebody come the spirit of god is still telling me there's somebody and you are looking at the person they're saying all right if you feel you just want a better life you just things are not working then somebody drowsily comes out as if you are doing the pastor a favor this night if i make altar call those of you who are outside just see it as a relay race as soon as i make the altar call leave your friend and run and just come and stand here because this is about your life i don't ask people to close their eyes when i'm making altar calls I'm not saying if, if you think you can make it i think i have not found a scriptural reason to back it there is no reason to ask somebody to close it's like i said close your eyes i want to drink water or close your eyes I, I want to open my bible why should i close your eyes because you are coming so i will not know you are going to heaven if you don't go i will not see you there once i don't see you there i already know that you didn't make it There are many Bible study teachers who are going to hell. There are many follow-up committee chairmen who are on their way to hell. They just gave them church appointment. They will finish drinking beer and do everything and say, all right, come. Uh, according to the manual of this church, right now, now that you are in Christ, desire the pure milk of the word, blah, 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 blah. And while you are talking, this person has never given his life to Christ it's just that he has taken so long and he has caused so much trouble in the church during the board meeting they said just give him give him let's rest jesus is coming jesus is coming this night just forget about your titles forget about your ministry forget about the fact that you are married forget about the fact that you are working right now just let everything that is earthbound depart from you for a few minutes and see how empty your life is without jesus christ i can do nothing without you there's no life to me so i need you in my life today this is one of the biggest deception in the body of christ right now there are even people that they pronounce salvation on because of the good deeds they have done to church look at me I will tell you where this error came from remember jesus said whosoever sins you forgive is forgiven 
Remember, he said that to his disciples. Now, a lot of men of God or people believe they have the exclusive right to come and tell you, I set you free. Whether you feel the remorse of sin or not, whether you are ready to get born again or not, Pastor, I was strolling by a car showroom and I thought that this is your suffering. Let me alleviate it. And I bought you a home and you say, you will make heaven. No, it's not a prophecy. There is a condition. I cannot prophesy the making of heaven to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many devilish teachings in the body of Christ. You release people to go to heaven or release them to go to hell by a prophetic pronunciation with no activity on their part you see this is why our altar calls don't last the people do not see a need to come out hallelujah before the people come out we put handkerchiefs here then we put tea or we put something and say just come out and there are counselors waiting with handkerchief to embrace you these people are pressured through life they are not making a sincere decision for jesus christ while they make it to just say okay take the tea and there is a, a little rehab room in the church where you sit down and explain to us all your sorrows i'm not saying don't care for people they say my husband left me he didn't leave any money for the children and they say oh lord strengthen them help them through life may you grant grace and may we all meet in heaven let me tell you that is a recitation it doesn't make any no bearing it does not mean anything some of you have convinced yourself that you are born again after this night you will know that you are not born again you see the reason why jesus said not all of you should presume to be teachers because your judgment will be heavier if you deceive the people that they are saved when they are not saved their yoke will be upon your head see let me tell you listen i'm a young man you think i like shouting like this you think I, I i would have come to teach you about prosperity or dimensions of the anointing and have everybody rejoice some of you are angry because i'm saying this thing now but the problem is you cannot take me to heaven so why should i let your face stop me from preaching the truth god gave me an anointing i opened my big mouth and i said god use me God said, yeah, you mean it? He said, yes, use me. Now he has given me the anointing. If I sit down and say, I don't want to offend Aaron. So let's just say, there are many ways to God, really. The, 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 it just depends on how fast you get there. Jesus said, I am the way. Everybody said the way. Men of God are now teaching that there are many ways, really. <laughs> Heaven is not the road to Abuja. You can follow directly through Zaria. Kaduna, you can follow through Kachia. There are many ways to get there. But when it comes to your eternal salvation, can I tell you something? Whether you are in Hawaii or Dubai or Kuwait or Zaria, the principle of salvation is the same. If Jesus is not in your heart, I guarantee you, you are going to hellfire. Number three. Let's hurry up. The third great deception that has come upon the body of Christ. Now this is where I want to center on for a while. Is perverted encounters of quote heaven and hell. You get my point? Put a small what do they call it now? Just put it there. Perverted encounters. Perverted encounters of heaven and hell. Matthew 24, 24. While you open it, just pray in tongues. I'm about to say something that I believe is going to liberate the body of Christ right now. Zeketekata brakata balada bakata fragada balada bakunda pratusha talaba kuriata. 
Prendo zoto pa koto prakate kata balada ba kata prakada balada ba. Are you there? Matthew 24. Verse 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 24. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets and shall show great signs take note and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive even the very elect 25 behold i have told you before verse 26 wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Look up please. Now. In the early 70s. Because of the renaissance that began to happen to the body of Christ. There were several revivals that started breaking out. Around Europe and then America. Certain people because of their passion. And their quest for God listen to me they were granted certain spiritual encounters now this had happened at various levels in the church age we see that paul had an encounter is that true there, there, there is a record in scripture i think let me start by saying this it is not unscriptural to have a spiritual visionary experience the Bible says in the latter days Joel 2 I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh he said and what your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men will see visions not a sister visions very serious spiritual activities that are about to be unfolded and then Jesus said when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth and he will show you that means you will see are you following me jeremiah 33 verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things all through scripture abraham had supernatural encounters moses are you following me now had a supernatural encounter Daniel, you list all of them. They had dramatic supernatural encounters. Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of these people. So it's okay to have spiritual encounters. Zechariah, a high priest that was ministering that year, had the angel appear to him. So the encounters of Jesus, hell and heaven is not against the scope of scripture. Are you getting me now? And so several people were granted access. And I'll tell you why God did this. Listen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 18. There's no time. It says the wages of sin. It said the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Is that true? And that the wages of sin is death. And then the Bible says that paraphrasing now the prophet speaking. He said is it god's desire that a sinner should perish and that he will not return and be delivered so god's desperation for the salvation of mankind god saw the degree of perversion and he saw that whatever needs to be done to help man understand the reality of his eternal destiny are you listening to me and then out of that compassion God began to call certain people into these experiences. He appeared to them. He showed them heaven. He showed them hell. They saw their loved ones so that they would come back with powerful messages. Now listen. When this started, those who were caught up were not even asking Jesus that they wanted to go to heaven. 
Are you getting me now? Back in the 70s, he appeared to them and he categorically told them the reason why he appeared to them. And he took some of these people to heaven. They saw the glories of heaven. They saw the angelic. They saw a lot of things. And then he took them to hell. Some of them saw their loved ones. They saw the different chambers of hell. And uh, they had the opportunity to talk with certain people. Is that true? They came back to this physical realm. And you could see the effect on their physical bodies. For some of them, when they came back, they stopped whatever they were doing. It took them years to recover. Because of the, the reality of the imprint of what happened to them. Praise the Lord and you can see that their encounter yielded fruits because they were going around evangelizing and teaching people and everything that they taught was not just based on the experience it was based on the word supported by those experiences listen when this strategy started becoming effective from the 80s down to the late 90s satan started perverting it with what i call false spiritual experiences what did i say false spiritual experiences certain people started having beings that were superhumans are you listening to me appear to them and then started bringing messages for them started taking them to astral realms Taking them to certain planes that were not pure heaven. But because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm. Are you getting me now? Some of these people had encounters and they came back with so-called experiences from Jesus, from hell, from planes. And you can see that the messages that they brought only ended up bringing fear and condemnation, not conviction to the body of Christ. Are you getting me? To a point that even those who were born again were now doubting the validity of their salvation. They started coming with ridiculous conditions that no human being can fulfill to meet heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? The devil started mixing these things. And I will show you that this is consistent with Satan's character. The Bible says that Jesus planted wheat. And then in the night, what happened? Satan quietly came and planted tears. Are you seeing that is scriptural? And when the vine dressers came and saw it, they said, Master, let's block it. And he said, No, 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 no. Leave it. Because in in the bit to correct it, you may injure the experiences that are true. Let them grow. Let the experience mature. Then you can now start filtering it. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel. When you come, I happen to stumble across a number of these great articles. One of it disturbed me. It was somebody who was not a believer, and he seemingly died and went to hell. And when he got to hell, the escort that took him to hell, listen to me, started listing almost all the men of God. That have labored for the kingdom and died. I, I don't want to begin to mention names. But let your mind grow wild. The, anybody you know that church history has spoken. He said they saw them in hell. And that in hell. They began to tell him the names of other preachers who were here in heaven. I mean in the earth realm. Who are also going to hell. And the person brought the article. With a loud cry. And they began to write books and publish it around. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things 
that some people have come back with that they said made people to go to hell I'll just list them at random hallelujah a lot of people have come back from hell and heaven and said when they went to heaven Jesus told them all the ladies wearing trousers are going to hell all the people who are not covering their hair are going to hell all the brothers with plenty hair going to hell all those on jeans going to hell anybody that wears a watch that is expensive like this you are going to hell those who do not bring offering in church going to hell if you look at a sister and just say ah this lady is beautiful please don't laugh i'm not mocking those people i'm trying to communicate something serious here are you following me now if you have a beautiful church with a nice pulpit and you are organized it's a sign that god is not with you if you're a man of god and you have a crowd there is every probability you are going to hell if you are rich and you are a millionaire you are going to hell so they came with if you are wearing bangles if you wear any nice earring you are going to hell if you use cream or a nice perfume this is a sign you are not serious with the agenda of god you are going to hell so different listen please don't i know that we come from different churches i'm not trying to talk about church at all please get my motive for communicating this and then other people said they went to heaven and saw certain people that were not close to anything god they said they saw them in heaven they were gloriously seated adorned with white robes and now they began to confuse people in the earth realm hallelujah other people also said that they went to hell and they went to rescue others that were in hell and brought them back to life I, I'm, i've read some of these things so these are not hearsays to the extent that they went to begin to mention the names of men of god i've not seen my name in any of the books but who knows who knows very soon somebody now will go and say he saw that they have already written it just finish what you are doing and come back now now listen let me tell you what this will do to a new convert let me tell you what it will do to a new convert if you are looking up to a man of god for spiritual direction are you getting me his spiritual life is serving as an encouragement to push you and they now say that man of god they have already signed the document that is going to hell can i tell you something i want to prove to you scripturally it is impossible to conclude about a man in the earth when he is still alive so that makes that thing a fallacy because the bible says it is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment judgment is not before death hallelujah a lot of people read the bible as story books now go to bookstores and see every kind of divine revelation book by any and everybody listen spiritual encounters do not renew your mind your mind is renewed by the word of god visions can be corrupted according to the residue of babylon that is left in your mind i can prophesy out of an unrenewed mind and miss the spirit because my mind has not come into alignment why will paul cry and tell the church my little two children of whom i travel until christ be formed he was talking to believers listen let me tell you something hear me if i am looking for money right now huh, and god opens my eyes i can pervert the gift of the spirit and look at promises account and call your account number and call the name of your father mother and brother and tell you go and withdraw this exact amount is that the amount you are? Who say it and people will clap that does not mean god said it are you getting me now it the gift may be correct it came from god 
but because I have not stayed with the spirit to sustain the character that will pack that level of spiritual delivery I can pervert it and corrupt it this is how many men of God have entered witchcraft unknowingly because they do not know the word. Their entire life is supported by spiritual experiences. So the day God appears and the day a witch appears, they don't know the difference. They download the same message and keep contradicting themselves. Hallelujah. perverted encounters many people I know a lady who went to seeming heaven I read her article I think she was an Indian Indian or one of these ladies and she said she saw the Holy Spirit as a woman in fact Ruach was the name now she gave it a Hebrew name and said the Holy Spirit is a woman she brought there is the book there is the book she wrote it the way of the master these guys that do program the way of the wasa they were interviewing one gay man that has become a woman the person said god told him that what he was doing is right do you know that there is a gay bible right now oh yes there is a gay bible to have seen it online people came with revelations you see what this this distorted revelation the bible says even if an angel comes with another gospel he said let him be accursed hallelujah see hear me the lord jesus christ appeared to me are you hearing me i have seen him i have not gone to heaven i have not gone to hell but I've been caught up infinite times to the realm of the spirit. And I can tell you the realm of the spirit has a lot of spiritual planes. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's an atmosphere. Many people, the realms they are going to are astral realms. Everybody say astral realms. They, they, they travel. You hear them say they went to Jupiter. They went to Mars. They went to Pluto. They came with revelation from Pluto. They, they met a deity in Pluto. And, 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 and he told them, we are coming to the earth. And they come back and start teaching according to that which they have learned. Many things are transporting themselves from many foreign demonic realms. And they are finding their way to the body of Christ. Because many people are trying to do the things that they saw. Everybody lift up your Bible. In this jungle of confusion, this is the only correct roadmap to arrive there. Lift your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, lift what you have. So long as it contains the word of God there. Say, this is my Bible. It's the truth of God's word. It will never change. It will never be edited. It is truth for eternity. In the name of Jesus. Don't sit down with your Bible. Some of us, the last time we read our Bible was over a month ago. All we keep reading, I believe in reading men of God's books. Don't get me wrong. But where books replace the book? In our quest for Rema, can I tell you something? I am frankly not impressed. When I hear people bring Rema, all I want to know is the degree of its agreeableness with truth. Because the devil can give Rema. The Bible says the demons know that Jesus is Lord. That means they can give you lecture. By God's grace, I have conducted countless deliverances for people. And sometimes these demon spirits begin to shout and manifest. And you hear them quoting scriptures more accurate. Kenny is not around. I was praying for a lady. Hear me. I was praying for a lady who came over at my place. And as soon as I laid my hands on that lady, this lady began to manifest. And she was shouting, shouting, just making noise. These demons, 
different voices, different kinds of demons were talking. This lady was quoting scriptures, quoting scriptures, and the demon would not go. Later on, the spirit started shouting, and he said, Apostle, is it not you that taught in Koinonia that we should redeem the time? Why are you wasting your time on me? Why don't you concentrate on God's people? This is a demon spirit. Now, I will carry that revelation. Are you seeing now? I will say I heard from the realm of the spirit that I should not waste my time. You, you get the point now? This is many people use information from deliverances. Is that true? Informations that are supplied. Now listen, here is the balance. The sincere truth is, under God's light, everything tells the truth, including Satan. Are you getting me? under the light of god because the bible says at the mention of his name every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess the truth no one tongue will lie but then the balance is where you stay and begin to receive supply please i'm not criticizing any man of god are you getting my point i'm just communicating to you the truth of god's word if your pastor or you conducts deliverance like that we are learning I believe we are growing as we grow we'll find out more but as far as the word of god shows us at this level i tell you the truth there are not many times that jesus held conversations with demons and where he did that it was to reveal to us certain things like i said if that is a method that has worked for you jesus said whoever is not against us hallelujah whoever is not against us is for us perverted encounters a lot of people have come back with dramatic encounters under certain demonic anointings men of god go for conferences some of them come from covens demonic covens and they seemingly open the heavens over congregations and translate people through magic and astral travels into realms in the spirit and there is a widespread manifestation a man called pastor kim listen to me true story a man called pastor kim i think in one of the asian countries they were having a vigil for 30 days how many days 30 days every night and they were having a lot of genuine spiritual encounters but every time the people had the encounters they went to the pastor the pastor was a pastor indeed not this kind of our pastor they 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 earned the right to be called spiritual leaders based on their commitment and their sacrifices and hear me this is what happened and it shocked me one of the innocent ladies said as they were praying because they had appearances, visible appearances that like an angel will appear right now and up to 10, 20 people will see the person. It is possible. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them, not to one person, to them. They had him, all of them, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. So the Holy Ghost can speak expressly to people from scripture. Hallelujah. Then what happened? This lady, listen, in the heat of the prayer they were having experiences the next thing a seeming jesus listen please a seeming jesus appeared to the lady and came and said i am the lord jesus are you getting me and when she looked because the pastor had trained them to discern spirits are you seeing a good pastor not that he will discern for them and take the glory as a geo he has trained the members to discern spirits. He has drilled the church to be strong and manifest as the church indeed. So while the lady was looking at Jesus, although she was seeing a picture of a seeming Jesus, she said in her spirit, that light, there was no connection. Are you getting me? Deep was not calling on to deep. And the Jesus was telling her, come, I am Jesus, come. And she looked immediately she was comparing his experience with many that have happened in scripture because every time he's called the prince of peace so if he appears 
there should be the atmosphere that characterizes his presence but there was turbulence in our spirit hallelujah immediately she looked at him and then she said she just looked at him and she called her pastor and they looked at him and the pastor laughed and she just said in the name of jesus i rebuke you that seeming jesus changed immediately into a big ugly beast and disappeared that would have been another movement founded now is that true he would have called and said now the things that i speak unto you right i want to show you another dimension of power every time you want my power to move tell the people to cut wheel four times and touch pastor william's right hand and all kinds of devilish movements arise from seeming encounters hear me church of the lord jesus christ hear me koinonia let me tell you do not reject supernatural experiences because god is still in the business of doing it but the holy spirit in this day and time must become your best friend are you getting me it is the spirit together with the bride that will tell the world to come if you never have any spiritual experience in your life it does not make you less spiritual are you getting me a lot of pastors have taught now they rank people in church according to those who see visions and everybody come with every kind of junk you go and see time for prayer meetings and you see everybody praise the lord i saw something what did you see my brother tell us i saw something i saw my man i was in a place and when i was standing there i saw my man and then pastor jakes you will never say anything wrong against him because you and then pastor jakes spoke to him and said my man come i will do this and you waste people's time telling them lies a lot of people lie on like they didn't go anywhere they didn't see those they said they saw they said and the angel told me to do let me tell you hear me see if an angel appears right now the moment i see him none of you here will be able to stand again you may not see him but you will feel his effect this is how spiritual things work let me prove it to you when jesus appeared to saul they did not see him but all of them fell at once the moment spiritual things materializes to one person there will be an effect that's why notice when i'm ministering to people and i hold their hands the moment that i see the demon in the spirit and i say i see you you see the person start manifesting there must be a reaction in this realm these are spiritual laws see ask yourself this night whether you are ready for ministry my brother this hurry some of you are hurrying with all what i'm sharing now ask yourself whether you are ready for ministry because some of you right now are just waiting for strike to finish let you just graduate and go and confuse people some of you have gone to one bible college one school of ministry here which is nice and you just believe that by it you are qualified it takes a spirit to qualify a man the bible says he has made us able ministers not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life you must eat this bible if you want to represent christ are you hearing me stay with the word respect men of god honor them but value the bible more than any man including myself when i become more important to you than the word of god i have become an idol are you hearing me as powerful as koinonia message it let it keep blessing you but i love god because most of the testimonies that come here are on account of the word not necessarily just prophecies or or that okay this and that happened the reason why the messages go is because of the word of god that that is contained in it hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i receive grace and discernment to detect wrong experiences now very quickly right i want to show you how do you test spirits 
How do you test experiences? We're going to round up now and we'll pray. I thought we'll be able to finish because I need to teach on assurance of salvation. If we cannot touch that, no problem. We'll touch on it briefly before we enter a new topic next week. If somebody comes right now and says, Joshua Selman, I think you're going to hell. I'm not even going to pray about it. I'll just tell the person, I appreciate your opinion. You can know. Some of you don't know. That's why right now, after this hot message, you have come out from many altar calls, so you even came out last week. If I call now, you will still come out. Which may be necessary, if it's necessary, come out. But the truth is, many people come out of altar calls because of uncertainty. When the message is too hot, you tell yourself prevention is better than cure. <laughs> At least God will not drive me. Let me just come out. So that if I've done it wrongly somewhere, let me do it correctly now. Have you been blessed this night? This should not make you go and start mocking people and say, you, what nonsense is your own pastor teaching like this? No. You don't become matured like that. It's not for you to carry the word and say, now nah, for you, if this is what you are getting here, I'm sorry for you. Mm -mm. The, the word of God makes you become like Christ. It should project in you the spirit of love and appreciation for the body of Christ. Our ultimate goal is to give you a kingdom mindset, not a koinonia mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. Hallelujah. How do you test spirits? Number one. Every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. Whether preaching, whether teaching, whether prophesying, every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. That means if I come to prophesy to you or I teach you and it's not consistent with the universal character of truth, reject it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Is that true? It said whether there be tongues, they will pass away. Whether there be prophecies, they will pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. So whatever is being done, if I come to prophesy to you right now, whether it's a good prophecy or a bad prophecy number one you must judge the character of the man delivering it are you following me now if i am angry with pastor femi and god gives me a word for him do you know that most likely my prophetic word will be perverted because it's not flowing from the spirit of love so even where god has stopped the prophecy another spirit will take over and i will say something else that god did not say that's why you must minister in love number two the bible says this is how you know the spirit that is of god and the spirit of error he said every spirit that does not say jesus is lord every spirit what scripture is that first john John, let's find it. It's important. We'll find it and then we'll pray. First John chapter 5, verse 4. As you open it, begin to pray in tongues. 
away. Who has found it? Four verse, verse one. Thank you, good Bible students. Four verse one. First John. Some of you have no hope of opening anything. You have never ever opened it. You don't even know that it's there. Take your Bible study serious. I, I saw some of you. It was everybody open now. Some of you say, ah, let me quietly close my Bible. I don't even know where First John is. Change. Change. We don't condemn you. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God because many what? False prophets are gone into the world. What's the litmus test? Verse 2. By this know ye the spirit of God. He said every spirit that confesses that Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Listen. When you are about to test spirits, whatever spirit that does not acknowledge the ministry that Jesus came to do. He said every spirit that does not confess that Christ is come in the flesh. Why did he come in the flesh? Great is the mystery of godliness. That Christ, God, became flesh. Is that true? He died for people to redeem them. That means any prophetic word that will not ultimately lead to your redemption and to your salvation is a fallacy and is of the devil. There are few judgments in scripture that are called the written judgment. They are written because nobody will pray them away. For instance, nobody will pray sinners out of hellfire. It's a written judgment. Is that true? Nobody will pray the tribulation away. The tribulation is coming. It's a written judgment. Nobody will pray away the doom of Satan. We can come together and say Satan has caused too much problem in the world. Let's pray. Let God have mercy on him and so that we will rest. No. It's a written judgment. Psalms 149 talks about the written judgment. But as long as a human being, listen, listen please. If I am a man of God today and I walk to Mike and I say, Mike, your case, there's no hope again. Are you getting me? You, you are going to hell. There is no case. This is a perversion. It's not the spirit of God because there is hope for the living he who is just so long as you are alive are you getting me the condition listen please there is still a condition for you to be alive and it will be a hopeless condition let me tell you that it is called when you have a reprobate mind the bible says a time came when god himself was weary and it repented god that he made men is that true the bible begins to talk of certain people who whose conscience has been seared with hot iron. There are people today that even if Jesus Christ walks in Zaria for 100 days physically, they will look at him and say, Jesus, yeah, where from again? I thought you came here yesterday, but they will not repent. Because Jesus walked for 33 years. They saw him. Some even escorted him and watched at the cross. They still died and went to hell. There were two sinners by his left and his right. Is that true? One of the sinners went to hell. One of the sinners went with him in paradise. You are the spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'll give you three points. What did I say? The first point is testing spirits. It must be consistent with the universal character of the word of God. Listen, because of our personality differences as preachers, 
and the vessels of delivering the word of God. You can see a man of God who is very quiet. There are some of you that a man of God is quiet does not make him genuine. It's just his personality. There are other people like me who can be talkative. Blah, 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 blah. I say, Kai, this guy is talking too much. Like, like this is not of God. If it's of God, he will be quiet. No. You don't judge spiritual things by people's personality. Elijah was a temperous person. Are you getting me? He called down fire at once. He didn't even waste time. There were other emotional prophets like Jeremiah who were always crying. Is that true? They were called weeping prophets. It was him that wrote lamentations. He was lamenting, lamenting. There were certain disciples that were as hard as a rock. Nothing moved them. But there were others who were soft. One of them was John the Beloved. There were some who were just less as fair. All these other names in the Bible that the Bible doesn't record. They were dear, but they were not dear. They were just, let's go out fishing. I'm going. Come, follow me. They still came. You know, just, there are some Christians like that. So personalities differ. <laughs> There's a man of God, every time I watch on TV, I almost laugh. That guy can speak almost 120 words per minute. I've never, the day he was talking with his wife, I didn't know it was introduction. Is that also? <laughs> I said you have introduced your wife but he's a very sound man of God very sound man of God there are others who take one hour you need to fight sleep and open your eyes like this open your eyes before you understand but regardless of how it is discern what they are saying in light of truth are you getting me? Number two. No, I'm, 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 we're reviewing. What's the second point? Yes. That does not say Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, every truth of God's word must point men towards redemption. Any kind of redemption. Whether redemption from their predicament, redemption from ignorance, redemption from eternal loss god is a redemptive person are you following me now so if i just tell you i say tolu i see disaster coming to your house or i see that somebody in your house wants to kill somebody that's an incomplete prophecy because there is no redemptive aspect of that prophecy are you getting me so i have a right to dump that prophecy praise the lord hallelujah the third one and I'll round up with this and I'll do an altar call and we'll pray hallelujah are you ready now it must bring three things three things in the lives of people there that's the third point number one it must reveal the love of God it must not bring condemnation and it must bring hope love lack of condemnation and hope see listen god does not condemn but he also does not condone are you getting me now condemnation is different from conviction what the holy ghost does is conviction what men do is condemnation god will not condemn you but it does not mean he will allow you if i speak to you right now and you sense that what I'm saying is coming from the heart of love. If God shows me, for instance, that this brother has been sleeping around, and I just come and look at him, and I just wind my hand, I say, I've been wasting my time in Koinonia here talking. I just give him a dirty slap. I say, come here, come, come and kneel down here. You know, churches have become paramilitary right now. We humiliate God's people because they sign our membership register. And I give him a dirty slap. I say, so, whose wife have you been sleeping with? Come and stand here. Whose wife have you been sleeping with? This is not the manifestation of the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God has revealed to me, assuming for instance, this is your wife and you have been sleeping around, I will apply the wisdom of God's word because the kingdom of God is not in word but in righteousness, peace. 
That means I will not wreck your family in an attempt to reveal something to you. Are you getting me? I rather call. That's why sometimes you see me talk to away. I take the mic away because of the sensitive things I'm telling them. I heard of a story of one zealous man of God whose wife, she, a preacher's wife, has been sleeping around in a church. He's a prophet, a true prophet. But this guy, that you mismanage the anointing does not mean you are not genuine. It's just that you are not matured and it can lead to perversion. Which is not the character of the spirit. True story it happened in Abuja. The man just looked at the pastor's wife and started piecing everything that was happening in the church. Called her out. Called some of the brothers, the deacons, the helpers in the church who are helping the pastor and all the people. You see, it caused more chaos in the church than redemption. There are many men of God that do this. This is not the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that does not mean to condone. Are you getting me? But the Bible says, do not rebuke an elder publicly. There are scriptural guidelines. I would rather call them and say, okay, I want to see you with your wife. Or mama, I want to see you. This is what the Lord is showing me. And I think it's good that you work on this, this and that and that area. Some of you have had the F on three to send text messages to men of God. Hello, sir. The Lord is showing me you are not being serious with your life. You are just pretending. Your days are numbered. I speak as a child of God. Send. You are not matured. You think it's spiritual maturity. Or you hear a hot message like this. You just go and say, Daddy. Time has come to stop sleeping with all these women. I will not keep quiet again. If you like, kill me. Send. Your father will beat you and drive you out of the house. Spiritual things must be approached with wisdom. That's why Jesus met with the centurion because he was a noble man and they talked one on one. Nobody had that case again. There are people today I counsel because they are men of God and the status they have. Sometimes they come, they have fallen or done something. You will never hear it from my mouth anywhere. It must bring love. There are many people that cannot go and meet a man of God for counseling because of what they have done. Many people rather go and meet other pastors than meet their men of God because they know if I tell the pastor I did this, the past now this it can be annoying. Let me tell you the truth. You don't know what it means to stand here every week and be lashing it out. Some of you just keep looking like this as you are looking your mind is already thinking of the bad things you go and do. So it can be frustrating. However, it is at that point we will see how much of the spirit of Christ. If you are so full of the Holy Spirit that you are prophesying and it's not leading to love and discipline, something is wrong. The same Holy Spirit who operates in you so strongly should manifest his character too so strongly in you. Is that true? These three litmus tests. Test every word. As you go browsing, when you see revelations, test them. If you don't believe them, don't condemn the man of God. Don't go and write any article against any man of God and quote me. Praise God. Perversion. This one is on rampage and it must stop. We are going to pray this night. Many of our family members started misbehaving the day one prophet came to their house and told them something about seeming heaven and hell. They just confused. I know I counseled a, a family like that. Something happened around the family and they brought some devilish teachings to the point that it started affecting their mother. Rise up on your feet. Everybody inside and outside, please stand on your feet. Please, all of you, just close your eyes in one minute. Inside and outside, just close your eyes in one minute. I want to talk to you now. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And Jesus is coming soon. One day, the trumpet will sound. And I tell you the truth from my heart. There are many people who have not made it right with God. Some of you are inside this auditorium right now. 
some of you are outside some of you may be men of god next week i'll touch on the conditions for salvation and the assurance of salvation and will answer the question can a man lose his salvation hallelujah but right now you have heard the word of the lord as you're standing outside or inside the holy ghost is speaking to you and saying it's time to make your ways right some of you have never made this decision every time you hear preachers preach it you keep laughing let me tell you something heaven is real jesus is coming soon a day will come this life will pack up some of you have given your heart to the lord but you found yourself backsliding you really derailed from the things of god now is the time to make up your mind i know there are many of you outside some of you were invited you just strolled with your friends the lord wants to give you a new beginning any other thing we teach that is relevant in time is only relevant if your eternal salvation is guaranteed as you are standing hearing my voice in koinonia this night the holy ghost is speaking to you no matter how many times you have come out even if you came out last week and you think what you did was just play i want you to make a decision for jesus christ as the worship team begins to sing all oh, the blood of jesus i want you to leave wherever you are and run and come and kneel down here i'm going to count one to ten hallelujah as i count one to ten do not let the devil stop you the devil wants you to go to hell as i begin to count i want you to rush out right now one two run out there are many of you you are welcome run and come and kneel down run and come and kneel down leave your seat and run three no power will stop you keep coming don't let your friends stop you there is heaven and there is hell for keep coming no matter how far you are keep coming keep coming you god bless you god bless you this is your redemption from hell five it was in one of love six keep coming there are still more people outside there are still more people outside don't let the devil rob you of this opportunity seven the lord is ministering to me there are still more people outside some of you are afraid of your friends the friends that you came with they will go to heaven and leave you behind i want you to leave your seat right now and come leave your seat and come there are a number of you outside the lord is ministering to me there's nothing to be ashamed of begin to come right now eight leave your seat and begin to come begin to come there's nothing to be ashamed of eight keep coming keep coming don't let no devil stop you keep coming for the salvation of your soul today is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation nine there's one more count and we are done the door is still open the door is narrow but it's open
I salute all of you that took the bold step to come out. And should in case you are in the crowd and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now, you can still run and come and join them. There's no need to be afraid. Nobody condemns you. This is a family. We are genuinely interested in your salvation. Those of you who are here, lift your hands and begin to talk to the Lord with your own words. God brought you out here. Lift your hands. Take it seriously. Begin to talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Those in the congregation, stretch your hands and pray for them. Stretch your hands and pray for them. A harvest for the kingdom. Because you invited them, they will not go to hell. Look at them crying. Look at people crying genuinely. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I one more time. I, I believe. believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. Lord, I Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Lift your hands high above your head. I'm about to lead you. To make the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life you have prayed for prosperity you have prayed for health but now you will pray the greatest prayer with every sense of sincerity in your heart the lord jesus is in this place i'd like you to say after me lord jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me I accept that I'm a sinner but tonight I've heard your word I don't want to go to hell I don't want to live a miserable life on earth therefore I come to you my Savior my King my Lord I repent of all my sins I receive cleansing and I receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm a child of god from today my name is in the book of life wash me with your precious blood i denounce sin and satan the power of sin is broken over my life from today forward ever backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father you have brought these ones by the power of your Holy Spirit they have heard your word tonight and they have made a genuine commitment my God and my King I pray let this be the beginning of a genuine journey into mighty things make them mighty men and women of God in the name of Jesus Christ we receive you into the greatest and the biggest family the biggest family the very family of faith in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit celebrate god for them we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you hallelujah now pastor jakes is going to have a meeting with you tomorrow by 5 p.m please and please it's important that we follow you up and guide you all right just help you to know what it is that you need to do from here 
Pastor Jake's, the venue, the venue is going to be chapel just by the book stand. Please make it, if you invited anyone here, please encourage them. Hallelujah. So that they will have a meeting with Pastor Jake's, will get you filled with the Holy Spirit and will guide you on the foundational truths of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Lord preserve you. Now please rise up gloriously. Follow the ushers. They will have your names and your details. We'll contact you and we'll meet with you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. We will see them in heaven someday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. Hallelujah. I'm declaring from today until next week Thursday a prophetic time of evangelism are you hearing that I'm going to pray for you that the unction of the spirit will come upon you are you hearing me I want you to take many of you you can go in groups you can go individually evangelism in your room in your home if you cannot preach invite them are you getting me throughout this week i will do it everybody don't condemn people don't create a subject of argument there is nothing to argue about you are going to go with the power of the holy ghost we have taught you here as you go you will heal the sick as you go you will cast out devils you will demonstrate the authority of the kingdom i will do that just before we round up right now let me take those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time worshiping with us in koinonia we love you we celebrate you inside and outside no matter how far you are i like you to leave your seat and come out quickly we want to bless and speak a word of prophecy god bless you you are welcome god bless you, you are welcome appreciate them appreciate them if this is your first time don't remain behind don't be ashamed outside there are a lot of you you're welcome keep coming keep coming god brought you to bless you god brought you to bless you this is not all some of you are ashamed keep coming we have a blessing for you jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. Thank you so much for coming, every one of you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. And our goal here is to build people, to bring them into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To teach you the principles of the kingdom so that you will go and be an ambassador. You will represent the government of heaven here in the earth. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly appreciate every single one of you. Hallelujah. And we want to pray for you right now. Listen, we are anointed. If we bless you, you are blessed. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we bless them. Remember, you have the anointing. Stretch your hands and speak over their lives. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We command that you are strengthened. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. The Lord strengthens you. You are mighty upon the earth. And you are relevant even in the spirit. May the Lord bless you. Every sickness in your body, we curse it right now. Every oppression of darkness. Every door that is closed against you, we command that you go back and find it open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming once again. Now, I'd like you to just follow the ushers. They will have your details and they will welcome you more warmly on our behalf. God bless you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Just follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will direct you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The announcements, please. Hallelujah. Now, before we take the announcements, I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life and release grace upon you. Koinonia is a place where we raise mighty men. It's not a place where men see a mighty man. Hallelujah. Every one of you will be involved in evangelism. 
Many of you, for the first time, you will see yourself flowing in the gifts of the Spirit this week. Hallelujah. Do we need to meet in the evening? Is there any need? Hallelujah. Is there any need? Okay. You are saying yes. That means you will come. Not at chapel there. What will happen is the evangelism is not for evening. Are you getting me now? The evangelism is for is for from this night right now. Huh? Till evening. Do we do that, Jakes? Sorry, one minute. Let me just consult with the evangelist. Okay. Praise God. Now, this is it. Get them born again by yourself. Alright? Every evening from tomorrow night, from from five, Pastor Jakes will be there. Sometimes I will be there. You are going to bring them and get them filled with the Holy Ghost by yourself. Listen. If any one of them says they are sick, you are going to pray for them. If you pray and it does not happen, we will help you. But now this is practicum. This school of ministry students laughing. Hallelujah. Praise God. So every one of you is a man and a woman. You are declared a man and a woman of God this week. Are you hearing me? Don't tell me from now till next Friday you cannot win at least two people. No matter how stubborn they are. Depend on the ability of the Holy Ghost. Share with them your own experience. Hallelujah. Everyone be involved. Young or old, be involved. Do you believe that? Lift up your hands. So when you get them born again, invite them. By five o'clock, we'll be there in the chapel. We'll talk to them. You get them born again. If they are sick, pray for them. Expect miracles. Flow in the anointing. Flow in the word of knowledge. Make your mistakes. Don't worry. Don't worry if you make your mistakes. Hallelujah. If you don't know what to say, just talk. The Bible says when you stand before them, you shall not think of what to say in that very hour. It will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy. Father, we are declaring by the leading of the spirit that this week we are going to depopulate hell and populate heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that grace to move in the supernatural grace to evangelize with power power evangelism evangelism through the operation of the gifts of the spirit receive it now in the name of jesus christ many of you will bring back a mighty harvest of people some of you your loved ones that have refused to get born again this is their week of salvation finally in the name of the lord jesus christ i release you to flow in the prophetic i release you to flow in miracles I release you to flow in the gifts of the spirit. I release you to flow in the prosperity that will bring the harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus.